Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Vime and today I'm going to show you how to install PPSSPP onto Xbox dev mode. In this video, all you're going to need is the PPSSPP version 1.15.4 UWP file and also I recommend an external USB. You can find this file within my Discord under the dev mode apps. I right, bet now all we're going to do is go into our browser, type in our remote access link and we're going to go into the remote access portal. I bet once we get to the Xbox dev portal, what you want to do is click on add right underneath my games and app. Go to the folder where you have your download for PPSSPP and simply drag this right into deploy or install application. Click on next. It's going to ask you for any dependencies. There is no dependencies needed for this. So all you have to do is click on start. I bet and then once it's finished we're going to head over to the Xbox and open up that. I bet now that we're back on the Xbox first thing you want to do is hover over your new app hit select on it go down to view details and if it's not set to a game already make sure to change it from an app to a game and then simply just open up the app. You will be greeted with this saying create or choose a PSP folder. Now if we were to do this, your data will stay even if you uninstall the app. Your data can be shared between other versions of the app as well because it will be stored on your external USB. Or if you don't have a USB and you're doing everything completely internally, then you could just click on skip for now, use app, private data. I'm going to be using a USB for this method so I'm going to click on this and then go to OK. And now it's going to ask you for a directory on your USB. So for me, I'm just going to head over to my USB. And then just do it right into the root of it and click on select. Now if you get the screen that says already contains PSP data, what's cool about this is if you already had previous data from the other builds, it'll automatically set up your directories for you so you don't have to do anything but select your USB and then you should be good to go. Before we move on to the next step, I just wanted to show you guys the folder that the app created on your USB. And from here, this is where you would add your cheats, your plugins, your textures, this is where your save data would be. So I just wanted to let you guys know. And then now we're gonna to go to the next step about the settings of the app. All right, for those that didn't have their games directory automatically set up, all you would have to do is go to the games tab, head down to this home button and click on it. It should now put you in your PSP folder, but what you're gonna do is click on this arrow. And then now this is gonna show you the root of your USB. So from here, look for your games directory and now look for the folder that contains your games. And then once you do that at the bottom where it shows the minus on my screen, it should show a plus for you. Click on that plus and then it will save the directory. Now what we're going to do is go all the way to the right side and go into the settings. I bet now that we're at the graphic setting, you could change your resolution right here. For me, I'm just going to go eight times 4K. I'm on this Series X. You can enable full screen. You could do the V-Sync setting for games that have really bad performance or they're lagging just a little bit. You can enable V-Sync. I, I suggest trying one or two. A lot of other options at the bottom, such as speed hacks, performance tab, the texture scaling tab, texture filtering. And also at the very bottom, you can enable show FPS counter show speed and also the debug overlay. I'm not really worried about this, but I will enable the FPS counter. Now for the controls tab here, you could do remapping on the controllers. For me personally, I kind of like the controls by default, so I'm just going to leave it as is. There's also an audio tab where you could change the speed volume, you could add reverb volume, just minor audio settings. Now for the networking tab, I'm going to cover this in another video for the net play. It does work and it's pretty amazing, so stay tuned for that. For tools, this is just like a save data manager, system information, and just little miscellaneous things you could do. And then now for the system tab, you could enable now the have retro skipping. achievements. This is completely amazing because for me personally, I love going for achievements in these games. It makes them feel way more rewarding and kind of makes you more excited to get back on the older games. So I'm definitely going to set this up later. But if you don't have one, definitely go to retroachievements.org, create an account so you could sign into it so that when you play your games you can unlock achievements now if you were to load into a game and press the left and right trigger at the same time this will open up the quick menu from here this is where you could do your save states you could do per game settings display layout and effects and you can also report feedback to the dev and then if you wanted to exit to the main menu just click on this and then you're right back to the menu and that's pretty much about it if this video helped you out please give it a like if you're new to the channel 
make sure to hit that follow and i hope you enjoyed the video have a great one